Hi guys, welcome again to Intellect Medigos and I'm Dr. Chirag Mana. Today we have a patient in our ICU with pleural effusion. So I thought to discuss this topic with you guys. Pleural effusion is actually abnormal collection of fluid inside the pleural space. Now this can happen either due to increased production of the fluid or decreased absorption or maybe both. Now this is categorized into either transudate or exudate. In the transudate, there is imbalance or disbalance between the hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. So the main causes of transudate are mainly CHF that is congestive heart failure, second liver cirrhosis, third nephrotic syndrome, fourth decreased serum albumin. So these are the main causes and obviously there are many other causes in which there is this balance between the hydrostatic and the oncotic pressure. Now coming on to the other thing which is called as exudate. It results from the inflammation of the pleura or decreased absorption of the lymphatics. Now the causes of exudates are mainly infection, second malignancy and most common it is breast or lung cancer or they could be lymphoma or leukemia. Third, it could be due to tuberculosis. Fourth, pancreatitis. Fifth, trauma. Sixth, uh, esophageal perforation. Seventh, uremia. Eighth, chylothorax and many more. So there are many, many causes. So it results from either inflammation of the pleura or decreased absorption of the lymphatics. Now how to categorize whether, I mean, how to know whether it is a transudate or exudate. So there is a criteria which is called as lights criteria. If any of the three points is present, then it is considered as an exudate. So the first point of light criteria is full fluid uh, protein divided by protein in the serum if it is more than 0.5. Second, ratio of plural fluid LDH to serum LDH if it is more than 0.6. And third, if the value of uh, plural fluid LDH is more than two third of the upper limit of serum LDH. So these are the three points of lights criteria and if any of the above, I mean any of the three is present, then it is considered as exudate. How to approach these kind of patients? So the first and foremost thing you need to do is to take a good clinical history. If a patient comes to you with fever and night sweats, this goes in favor of tuberculosis or tubercular effusion. If a patient has a weight loss along with history of smoking, this goes in favor of malignant effusion. If a patient has trauma, then it could be either hemothorax or chylothorax. So many things get cleared just on the basis of good clinical history. Second is the clinical features of pleural effusion. It depends on the nature of fluid, the amount of fluid and the etiology of fluid. And the main symptoms are mainly the dyspnea, patient come to you with breathing difficulty and in the initial phases it is exertional. Second, they could be cough which is a dry. Third, some patients have chest pain. This occurs because of the inflammation of the pleura and because of the friction between the two pleura. So this pain is usually sharp in nature and is exacerbated by deep inspiration. So these are the mainly symptoms of pleural effusion. Along with that, you have to do a physical examination of the patient. In that, you can have decreased or absent breath sounds on the side of effusion. There could be decreased vocal fremitus and dullness on percussion. Now coming on to the investigation, because whenever you, have, you, are, you, you approach a patient for any kind of illness, the first and foremost is the history as we discussed. Second, clinical features or the symptoms. Third is the signs of physical examination and fourth is the investigation. So the investigation for pleural effusion is mainly a chest x-ray. We do a PA view as well as a lateral view and we see a blunting of CP angle that is costophrenic angle and a curved upper border which is LSS shaped curve. Second, if there is minimal fluid then we can go ahead with the ultrasound chest. Third, if you have to differentiate between let's say empyema and a lung abscess, you can go ahead with CT chest. And let's say if you are uh, you are having a suspicion of 
pulmonary embolism then you can go ahead with CT pulmonary angiography and the fourth is could be PET that is used to differentiate between benign and malignant pill diffusion the management of pleural effusion the procedure is called as thoracentesis it could be either diagnostic or therapeutic if you have to rule out and find out the cause then we go for diagnostic approach we just take out 30 to 50 ml of fluid and send for the investigations if the patient is getting symptomatic let's say having a high grade of dyspnea or increased chest pain then we go for therapeutic approach and depending on the amount of the fluid as well now before proceeding you have to first of all explain the uh, procedure the risk and the benefit to the relative and to the patient second you have to take a written informed consent third you should id check the coagulopathies of the patient the platelet and the ptn now uh, getting on to the procedure as you can see in this diagram patient is made to sit and lean forward to a table with hands by the side of the table now using ultrasound you have to first of all see the amount of the fluid and you have to locate the site for entry of your needle now if you go above as you see in the diagram you can injure the lungs causing pneumothorax whereas if you go if your approach is uh, just beneath the ribs then you can damage the neurovascular bundle and which can cause hemothorax whereas if you go lower down you can injure the liver as well the incidence of having pneumothorax after the procedure is around 2 to 6% whereas the incidence of hemothorax is around 1% now after insertion of your needle you have to uh, connect it to a three way which is ultimately connected to a bag and the maximum amount of fluid recommended so as to drain out is should be less than 1.5 liter so as to prevent the complication of re-expansion pulmonary edema although this uh, pulmonary edema is very rare now after doing all the procedure you have to observe the patient for next one to four hours so that if patient become dyspneic or there is a desaturation or there is hemodynamic compromise then you have to think about the pneumothorax tension pneumothorax then in those cases you have to get a chest x-ray done so this is how we manage a patient with pleural effusion so do leave your comments or your feedback in the section below and uh, because your love your comments your feedback they act as a fuel to our motivation so thank you guys for watching this video best of luck bye bye